It's playoff time in the AFL, and we've got a quarterback rematch from Arena Bowl 30. Randy Hibbert comes into Philly with his brigade of wide receivers looking to upset the defending champs. After missing most of the season with injury, Dan Rodemaw is back and ready to lead the soul on another playoff run. The road to Arena Bowl 31 continues right now. Welcome inside Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, night number two of the AFL postseason on CBS Sports Network. The two seed Baltimore and the three seed Philadelphia. I'm very glad you're along. Brent Stover on the Hall of Fame quarterback. It said Bonner. We'll talk about last night in a moment. This new format is going to be awesome. Let's just say that. It really is. It provides a lot of excitement. You've got to be ready to play wire to wire throughout the entire game and get it done. Baltimore had the better seed in this matchup, so they decided that they wanted to go on the road in leg number one of this two-leg, two-game series. It's all going to be decided on aggregate scoring, and we saw Albany throw the first salvo in game one of their matchup last night, beating Washington in OT by going for a two-point conversion, and now they will be plus one heading into a game on their home turf next week in terms of that aggregate scoring. Exactly where you want to be. In your home, you got one of the best defense in the league. You got a one-point lead going in. That plays out exactly how Rob Keefe wanted it to. All right, two of the best quarterbacks we've seen in the Arena League over the last decade square off here tonight. A couple of guys that throw it at a 69% clip this year. Let's start with Randy Hippard. And Randy's the guy that's continued to get better. MVP of the league a year ago. He's a guy that's gotten better each and every season he's played. He's got a ton of weapons for that brigade offense that he can distribute the ball to. Speed, power, quickness at the receiver spots. He is a guy that knows how to see it, and he gets it out of his hand quick when he needs to, but he'll stand in there tough to take the long shot to get the big home run ball when he needs to. 61 touchdowns, only five picks, almost 3,000 yards through the air. Dan Ronaball on the other side. Yeah, one of the best to ever do it. Uh, this guy will probably obliterate every record in the books. He's dominant as a quarterback because he understands what he's looking at, doesn't waste a lot of time to get the ball out of his hands, has some dynamic weapons as well to go to. This guy understands what Clint Gozell wants to do offensively before Clint even calls a play for him. They're a great pair. It's a two-game playoff series, a home and home two legs one in each building and it begins tonight between the baltimore brigade and the philadelphia soul kickoff next hey stay together all right special teams be special out there that's going to be the difference in the ball game stay locked in the whole time don't lose focus at any point in the game even when there's three seconds left and we're up 14 we may go for 21 right there, okay? Stay focused the whole time. All right, lock in. Be together on that sideline. Hey, only in this room right here. Ain't no worry about nothing else. Love you guys. Thank y'all. Let's go. Clint Dulcell of the Philadelphia Soul taking on Baltimore. Before we kick it off, we check in for the first time tonight down below with John Meter Perel. All right, thanks very much, Brent, here with Randy Hippard. Randy, you talked about your playoff experience last year, said you learned a lot. What did you learn, and what do you have to do this year to bring it home? Uh, learn not to take any play for granted or any detail for granted. So that's something we, we focused on this week is take care of the details, take care of the little things. What type of challenges will Philadelphia's defense present? Oh, it's a huge challenge. They're a great coach team, and they've been that for the last few years. Uh, anytime you go against a team led by Clint Dozell, you got to come with it every play from the start of the whistle to the last one. All right, Randy, good luck. Thank you very much. Brent? John, thanks. Here's his head coach, Omar Smith. Two seats, seven and five. And they will host like two of this on Friday night. They decided to come on the road in week one into hostile territory here inside Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. Clint Tolzell in his seventh season, eight and four in the postseason. The defending Arena Bowl champs, the Philadelphia Soul. Adrian Trevino to send it away. And Brandon Tompkins, the most electrifying return man in the Arena League, is back deep to open this game. Tompkins in his eighth year out of Arkansas State. In his career, 18 touchdowns on kick returns. He's a guy that can change a game in a hurry. 
been outstanding. You see the big time numbers. He is so explosive. And the other thing about him is you can get him stopped, but you don't get it. If you don't get him tackled, he can get started up and at full speed within two steps. That's how explosive this guy is. Trevino, sixth year kicker out of Missouri Valley. And here we go. Night two of the postseason in the Arena League on CBS Sports Network. Flag comes in late as Tompkins gets hammered back at the three yard line. Near the return, illegal block in the back, number nine in the receiving team. Penalties after this is the goal, first down. And with Damian Burrell. So Randy Hippert will start a little bit deeper, half the distance from his own two. They matched up four times in the regular season. They were two and two, and these his numbers against the soul in the regular season. Pretty good numbers. <laughs> you see he's done an outstanding job taking care of the ball. He's always been a guy that has completed the ball at a high rate. He's one of those guys that will stand in there until the very last second and deliver. From the two. Opening play from scrimmage. They barely got it off. Hippard launches down the far wall and into the front row looking for Tompkins. Perfect coverage down that sideline. Starters on offense with Tompkins, Collins, and Quentin Sims dynamic on the outside. Yeah, and you got a good offensive line up front led by Ray McNeil, Colin Madison, and Mr. McCray, Jordan McCray on the tight end spot, who was a good receiver out of this well. Him and Roy Nixon complement each other really well. This makes this a well-versed team. They've struggled down the stretch, but they've got new life. They feel like it's time for them to get it rolling. They've got all the pieces. They just got to make it happen. On second down from the two, Hippert fires far side caught. Short game. Quentin Sims, four yards, fourth year man from Tennessee Martin, 56 catches and 15 touchdowns in the regular season. And this fine secondary, Torres Jones, third year out of Western Carolina, James Romaine, Larico Stevenson, and Dwayne Hollis at the back end. I think what makes this secondary different than a lot is this team will put these guys in position. Clint will put these guys in a position to play man to man. 60 to 70 percent of time in the game. That's that's unheard of. So third and five from the seven. Motion man Sims. Hippard with time. Tom kicks the catch. Wrapped up and it's a first down pickup. After the 14 on a gain of seven. First catch of the night for Brandon Tompkins as we check out that sole defense. You got Calvin Fance on the outside. Walter Thomas in the middle. Big bull rusher inside. Willie McGinnis will get the start on the other edge. Jake Metz will rotate at that Mac linebacker spot. Joe Goosby, the veteran Jack linebacker, can affect the game. Torres Jones will be playing on the front side, or excuse me, the back side. And then you got James Romaine and Dwayne Hollis, the dynamic tandem. Those guys have been two of the best compadres over the last few years in the secondary together. Tompkins the motion man. Hippert on first. Man, man, man. Hippert deep, got a man wide open end zone. Touchdown, Brandon Collins on the opening drive. A 36 yard strike from Randy Hippert. And this is a very deceptive play. You see the sail route to the front side of the field with Brandon Tompkins. And, and, and this comes from no motion on the back side right here. And look what happens when you help on the back side. You see the open position that Hollis took. He opened the gates and ran thinking he had help. Didn't play his man, was kind of looking for help. That's a good job of recognition, well-designed play. In Baltimore on the board. Mark Lewis, top kicker in the league. 14th year out of FIU, drills it. 7 nothing. four minutes deep. And that Texas boy, old Brandon Collins, going deep. Now, all 
ultimately we're going to end up in the arena bowl and the remaining team with the highest average attendance per game will get to host so if albany wins that series and they're plus one after last night against washington albany will host and getting drilled at the one yard line big time special teams hit joe and nothing powell. there for larico stevenson joe powell Dan Rodabaugh against Baltimore this season. Another good look at numbers, but you see they've given him some fits. He's a guy that doesn't turn the ball over a lot. Just six on the season. Interceptions, he's got three against his Baltimore defense. Said Walker's defense has given him some problems at times. You got good athletic corners out there and a future Hall of Famer in the middle and another Hall of Famer coming off the bench. From the one, opening possession for Philly. Quick hitter out wide. And a game for Darius Prince out across the five yard line. He's listed as a rookie, but came on late and was huge in the Arena Bowl win last year. Six yard gain there for Prince. Second down four. Seven nothing Baltimore. Early here in Philadelphia. Rodabaugh handoff. Different look there and not much for Jeremy Richardson out of the Philly backfield. Jeremy Richardson led the league in Russian. Prince, you talked about Washa, who's had an outstanding season come on the last seven games like gangbusters. Darius Reynolds is back, folks. We've been looking for him. Last few games he's come back. P.K. Manley at the center spot, Wayne Tribute at guard, and Keith Newell gets a start for Neil Tivis at the tight end spot. So a third and four with Money Reynolds, Darius Reynolds, seventh-year man out of Iowa State in motion. And he makes the catch at a first-down pickup. Ankle tackled and taken down at the 14 on a gain of seven. And move the sticks for the first time tonight for Philadelphia. And some jaw jacking after that play. We saw some dust ups last night. All these Live teams saw ups. each other four times in the regular season. And now they're each seeing uh, the opposition twice here in the postseason. This is one of those things where you, <laughs> you know everything about the team you're playing. Just comes down to who makes the right plays at the right time. Aaron Washa into the game for the first time. Ronapal looking for Washa. Tackled up around the five, and there comes the penalty. It was Virgil Gray in coverage, and he's going to get whistled here. Pass interference defense number four. That Pelly's the line. The result of the play is a touchdown. What? I don't believe he can it's do not, that. It's not a touchdown. <laughs> the ball was incomplete. Dave Katia. Pass is incomplete. Will enforce the penalty 10 yards. That happens, set. It is a 10-yard penalty. <laughs> There's not a touchdown. The pass is incomplete. First down. Ooh, that's a tough one. He impedes his progress as he goes to make his break. Not a lot of not a lot of contact, and then they just get tangled up. If you're 15 yards down the field and you're trying to make a cut, you can't put your hands on a guy. So I get it. The trip or the fall was just incidental. You can't stop a guy from running full speed. Though. Right. Right. So a first down from the 24 for Philly on their opening drive. Baltimore scored a touchdown on their first drive. This, this is a dynamic play right here. Talk about, it's just a quick screen. 
Good job getting out front, but that right there shows the balance and athleticism and strength to stay on the feet Washa has. Right here, he gets put in the spin cycle and uh, whoop, knee never goes down, comes out of it. That's strong running right there. Washa, 49 receptions, 21 touchdowns in the regular season. And right now it's getting a little chippy and the team that plays with emotion, not emotional lead, will be able to get the win. And that's the ball put right on the money, literally on Reynolds. You gotta make that catch. And the starting defense for Baltimore. You got Damian Burrell at the edge. J-Law, Justin Lawrence at the no spot. Fritz on the edge, another quick guy. d -Jack, Dexter Jackson at the rusher. Michael Knight at the Jack linebacker spot. Very athletic, he'll be switching inside there with Joe Powell between the Jack spot and the front side corner or the back side corner spot. Josh Victorian, Virgil Gray, and Michael Knight will round out the outside. Second down goal for Audubon. And they blow it dead. Brian Staff, ball start offense, number three. Five yard penalty to second down. And that's the fullback Richardson. Seventh year man from Angelo State who had eight rushing touchdowns. 131 rushing yards this season. I'll tell you what, he is Mr. Versatility for, for the soul. Can play on the defensive side as well. Play D line. He's got three sacks on the season. Mason. I mean, that's a guy you need on the roster because his ability to do a bunch of different things. Washa in motion from the nine now on second down over the middle pass behind. Off the net, nearly picked off. That's a play you got to make. It was intended at the goal line for Darius Prince. Virgil Gray just gets his legs caught up. He's a little off balance. But watch Money Reynolds is not ready for this ball when he comes out. See, he's in a void. Get your head around early. Get your head around early. Dan tries to put it on him. But look at the void. And he doesn't look back. And the ball's behind. He's actually clearing the void instead of staying in it. Got to get your head around. That could have been disastrous early. You know it's early in this game, but you don't want to fall behind in your building to a team that's lost three straight games, two scores to none. Third and goal from the nine now. Rana Paul fires end zone. And over the intended target at Prince and Money Reynolds in the neighborhood brings up. That's a good job in coverage, being physical with a guy that wants to be physical with you. Dan started three of three, just. Over his last three, and now a pivotal early play in this game. Fourth and goal from the nine. Talked about the troubles he's had against this team. Three interceptions, and for a guy that doesn't throw any, you throw three against the same team. They're giving you some issues. So here it is on fourth. Ronapal lofts it up, corner broken up. Virgil Gray, and then picked off in the end zone, I believe. They're going to call it incomplete. Either way, it's a defensive stop and a big-time play by the veteran Gray. Virgil Gray says, I still watch him break on this route. Gets underneath it. No P.I. Our ball. Virgil Gray with the defensive stop for Baltimore at Philly's opening drive. In his seventh year out of Rhode Island with 73 tackles to lead the league and three interceptions. So now Baltimore, an opportunity to put their foot down early in this game, second possession. Randy Hippert over the middle, juggling catch. And a first down pickup out near midfield of 15 yards. And that's exactly what you need coming out of a defensive stop as Demetri Stevens made the catch. DJ, better known as, with his first reception of the game. So Baltimore scores on their opening, scores on their opening drive, said, 
Philly runs eight plays. They get down to the two-yard line. They take a costly penalty and come up with nothing on their Injury first try. An injured player. You gotta for come out unless you call a timeout. Yeah. For Baltimore. Yes. We're getting the entire conversation here. I, for, I thought that was Jordan looked like, It looked like a contact search going on down there. Jordan McCray's twin brother is uh, getting a look at the NFL this year. And he's been in the league as well. Third year from UCF for McCray. Hippert has four completions to four different receivers so far. This team is... Real deep up front as well. You throw Jeremiah Warren in there. We've got some guys that can get it done. And DJ Stevens in motion. Hippert on first. Rifle far side pass caught. And a gain of six yards. And Brandon Collins, who scored that early touchdown on a 36 yard bomb, makes his second reception. Fifty-nine in the regular season, eleven touches for Collins. He is as smooth as they get running routes. Kind of a, a long strider, but he gets in and out of his breaks extremely well. Second down, four quick hitter, DJ Stevens, slicing through and down inside the ten-yard line. An 11 yard pickup and another Baltimore first down. Tell you what, when you get him and Brandon Tompkins on the field at the same time, you can, you can run those type of plays in succession with those guys. Because both of them can, can make two guys miss on their own. They have the ability to bring their own blocker when they need to. And then when they get you sniffing up around the line of scrimmage, they'll just run past you and leave you in the dust. Hippert is 6 of 7, 80 yards and a touchdown. He's completed six straight. Now since missing that opening shot down the field. First and goal. Hippert broken up right at the goal line, intended for Stevens. And good coverage by James Romain. He got good help from his jack linebacker, Joe Gooseby. And that's what you got to do when you're coming across the box. Watch the Jack linebacker bumps him and he can't get out. Watch Joe Gooseby add some help right there. Misdirects, makes him go underneath, so the throw has to be a little flatter. You're ready to throw it up over the top. Football to 14 inside the final minute opening quarter. Tompkins over the middle. And he's wrapped up at the six and ring up third goal after a gain of a couple. And that will probably take us to the end of the first quarter. Randy Hippard was dynamic in the opening quarter. His team leads seven nothing. On their second drive now, seven of nine, 80 yards. Randy Hippard, and the quarter ends with the two seed Baltimore on the road in Philadelphia. Leading seven nothing. It's the Arena Football League playoffs on CBS Sports Network. Seven nothing, second quarter begins. It's the Arena League on CBS Sports Network. Night two of the playoffs coming up Friday at 7. Don't miss more as these two teams collide in leg two of their home-and-home two-game playoff series for a spot in Arena Bowl 31 right here on CBS Sports Network. Pippard on a deep drop over the middle, broken up in the end zones. Tompkins looking for a call, didn't get it, and a big time defensive play by Dwayne Hollis. So 
and just crossing routes, trying to rub them off with picks, with natural picks in, in the air. And that's a good job of staying with the route runner by Dwayne Hollis. And there's always going to be some hand grabbing, but receivers are also trying to separate with elbows yep. and little chicken wings. I love that no call by Michael Griffin. Let him play. Fourth down and goal. Collins in motion. Hipper rolls out in trouble. Fires back across. Marker down. Intercepted. Joe Goosby in the end zone for Philadelphia. There's a hold on Dwayne Hollis. We get number 22. He catches the motion, who runs directly into him. And then you're going to watch on film how the arms go around the outside of the shoulder pads. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal defense number 18, Jack linebacker left more than went more than five yards deep. That penalty's declined. Holding defense number 25. Penalties after this the goal. That foul is accepted. Automatic first down. So here's the Jack linebacker. The hold is going to be right here versus the motion. But watch the Jack linebacker get too much depth. He's going to be way back here. See, he's six yards, six and a half yards deep before the quarterback leaves the pocket. It's legal defense. And the hold was just a grab. But my thing is, if you're a receiver and you run right square in the middle of a DB's chest, yeah. what is he supposed to do? I say it week in, week out. Shouldn't you, shouldn't you try to avoid? It's, if yes. you run right into his chest, he has no recourse but to contact you, right? And, and I think there's, unfortunately, the defender gets wrongfully blamed uh, oftentimes, but it does get tight, especially at this area of the field. First and goal, handoff right side, Nixon. Stacked up, able to fall forward and gain a yard. Good second effort by Nixon, the fifth year fullback from St. Augustine. So Baltimore dodges an early bullet here. And after getting an offensive stop on Philly's opening possession, an opportunity to go two scores up to start this game. You see what Nixon has provided this season. He's done a nice job, has been with Coach Smith for a few years now, even back in L.A. Eighth play of the drive. Second goal from the one. Nixon lined up behind Hipper. Hipper takes it himself. Did he get there? He was in early. Still no signal. He was in early by the time they got there. No touchdown. Whether he was in early or not, they're placing it at the one foot line. Hippert's got five rushing touchdowns of the year. 77 rushing yards. Brings up third and goal. What's the call here, Seth? I think they're going to go back to the same thing. They had McCray in that pitching motion on the last play. Tight end 63 line up to the left. Hippert again. Got in that time definitively. Touchdown Brigade. And that's a statement by Hippert. He gets up and chucks it in the upper deck. <laughs> watch, watch him elevate over the top right now. You don't know how hard that is because your center's got to get out of there so fast. So for him to be able to get that snap clean enough to get up quickly with it, tells you got a veteran center in there popping it, putting it right in the slot. Mark Lewis. Low snap. Ooh. And he missed it off the iron. A rare miss by Lewis. Yet Baltimore up early. Making a statement on the road, leading 13-0. Thanks to the quarterback, Hippert over the top. Oh, 
13 zip. Early second, Baltimore had to grind out their second drive, missed PAT. We'll see how that affects things later. Clint Dolzell, the defending champs, down in a hole early here at home in the first of their home and home two game aggregate scoring playoff series. It's funny you bring that up. <laughs> we just had our first missed extra point. It's true. In the aggregate scoring area. Which we said every point counts. You made that point at nauseum the last two nights. Yeah, you have to, man. Oh, Lur good chance here. Larico Stevenson on a short kickoff. Stevenson with a hole. Out across the 15 to the 16 yard line. And a return of 23. Philly's last drive was eight plays. Said, but they came up empty. Yeah, started out great, but as soon as we got down the red zone, they started having their issues. A couple misses to Money Reynolds. Nearly an interception by Virgil Gray. And then on fourth down, Virgil Gray gets him out of there. All right, down to John. For defensive assistant before the game, guys, he said two things he's worried about Philadelphia's rushing attack and Dan Radabaugh's quick release. They want to get a lot of pressure on him. This just in, that's difficult to do. And said, let's give a little shout out to Watt Hausman's mother. She's your biggest fan, I think. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is Hausman. Up in the town. Caught down inside the 15. Welcome back, Sean Kalanamoku. You know, you know what? All he was last or two years ago was Arena Bowl MVP. This guy's a dominant player because he, you can't cover him. He is so quick, and his foot footwork is so fast. I mean, you you kind of get lost trying to cover him. And that's on the season. He's missed a ton of games, been injured, but it is great to see him out there. He is. A fun guy to watch, plays with a ton of passion. Gain of 22. Pass incomplete. I tell you, Radabaugh and Money Reynolds are struggling to get on the same page early on. Well, that time he had to throw around Darius Prince, who has to clear that area. Even if you have to go flatter, you just got to vacate that area to get out of there. Money Reynolds has a huge hole to work in. But when you kind of try to beat your guy off the off the move and you're taking a long time, now Dan has to throw around. He's making sure he's throwing it wide enough not to throw it right to a defensive back. From the 13, second down. Stack the receivers on the right. Rada Paul goes for the end zone out of the outstretched grasp of Darius Prince. And that's a that's a blown coverage, so blown opportunity. And Prince kind of misjudges it a little bit. But he's going flat. Dan not putting enough touch on that ball. That's something he does extremely well. Prince. Too flat, ball thrown over the top with too much pace. Dan Ronopaw just won for his last seven. You don't see that much from the Red Rocket. Third and ten, eight to play, second quarter. Philly down, 13 hit. And batted down at the line. It was a forward pass. Damian Perel. Making his presence felt. Look at him. You know you're not going to get there. You see the quick drop by the quarterback. And that makes it tough for Wayne Tribute to try to get to him as he kind of spies. Great play, good recognition. You see the grumbling. There's a lot of grumbling in the stadium right now. Lots. We haven't seen over the last several years Philly lose much or even trail much in this building. Fourth and ten. Ronapa intercepted at the goal line. That's Joe Powell. Joe Powell, who had four interceptions in the regular season, and Baltimore's second defensive stop to begin this game. 
They lead 13-0. The two seed doing what nobody ever does in this building. Six fifty-six first half. Baltimore has come in and stunned this Philadelphia crowd tonight so far. Two drives and two touchdowns for the visitors. And their defense has gotten two stops and shut down Ronabaugh and the Philly offense. From the one, Hippard gonna push it out of there a bit. And successfully gets that pile all the way out near the 10 yard line. Gates nine as we go back to the interception. And Joe Powell playing possum over here. He's just gonna sneak to the side, open his hips, watch Dan and be ready to run. This is a total setup by the Jack linebacker right here. As soon as that ball releases release his hands, he's all over it. Jack, ne uh, Dan never sees him in the box. So he figures it's clear. He may, might be to the front side. Easy one. Powell is with uh, John Meterbrell. All right, thanks very much, Brett, with Joe Powell. Joe, how'd you get the interception done? Uh, film study, really, you know, uh, we know what they're going to do. They've been doing the same thing for years. They got the same system, you know, same team. They got a veteran team. They got a lot of chemistry, but, you know, we prepare all week, so we know what's going on. You guys have a lot of cohesiveness out there thus far on defense. What are you seeing from the Philadelphia offense? Same thing all year. Same thing all the last couple of years. I played against the guys in 16. They still doing the same thing with different people. But we came out here with, with an attitude of we don't have nothing to lose. So we're going to give everything we got for these next two games, and hopefully we get to that arena ball and host that trophy. What do you have to do to keep it going? Keep up the energy. Play violent. That's it. That's all we out here to do. We come from Baltimore to come to Philly and play violent. That's it. They, they two-time champs. We ain't, we ain't with all that no more. All right, Joe, thanks very much. <laughs> Brent said. <laughs> That's about as good as it gets. Thanks, John. First down play, oh. Hippert. Launches, got a man, Stevens. And shown. Touchdown. Hit him in stride. 34 yards, Hippert to Stevens. He stood in there like a champ right there. Jake Metz. Jake Metz laid the hammer on him. Hit him in stride, as you described. But watch this route. Watch a quick move here and dead sets, which means there is no motion. You're running from a dead set. It takes a little bit longer, but he stands right in there, takes the shot, and that's there's no better feeling than that right there. When oh. somebody hits you and they're like, yeah, I got you, and you're like, no, you didn't. Look down there, buddy. <laughs> no better feeling than that. Three plays, 49 yards in 205. Lewis. 20 to nothing. It began with the brigade's second defensive stop. It's a beautiful play by Joe Powell. Defense leads to offense. Baltimore trying to run away. So, tell me, young man, do you remember what your dad and I taught you about hands-only CPR? Yes! Uh, kind of. If you see a teen or adult suddenly collapse, the first thing you do is... Call 911. And the second thing you do is... Push hard and fast in the center of the chest at a rate of at least 100 beats per minute. Who even knows what 100 beats per minute sounds like? Well, you get down by the way I use my phone. to nothing. DJ Stevens has been phenomenal. Baltimore's defense has been phenomenal. On the road, leg one of this two-game playoff series, and now an iron ball. It's loose. Out around the five. Picked up by Baltimore. Are you kidding me? Wow. And it's DJ Stevens. 
who's made now three massive plays in this wow. first half. That one's Mark Lewis. I mean, he, <laughs> I mean we've seen it all year long have we seen, I mean, from that man, says, from Lewis. You guys going to talk trash because I missed an extra point? Watch this. Watch this, guys. That is perfect. Oh, my goodness. Such a tough play for the receiving team because you're, you're running down and when it starts bouncing back at you, it's really tough. Mark Lewis has been doing it all season long. Bar ball, ball after bar ball. Tremendous onside kicks. First and goal, five yard line. Hipper rips it. Touchdown. Wow. Brandon Tompkins on a five yard strike from Hipper. And it's 26 to nothing. Baltimore on the road in Philadelphia. This is why this play is successful. So your Jack linebacker right here is responsible to take any crosser. The crosser goes underneath him and leaves that wide open. Watch how the backside receiver Collins takes the Jack right out of the play. And now you've got an open window. Makes it look easy. That's just pitch and catch. And Romaine was beside himself after the play. This is as quiet as this building has been in a long time. Said I've been trying to tell you about the virtues of kickers. A long, long time. Mark Lewis might be the MVP of this league this year, said. He's definitely the kicker of the year. I don't know about MVP, but holy cow, Baltimore is not playing around. 27 zilch in the postseason. Twenty-seven nothing. Philly's biggest halftime deficit this year was against Baltimore, and it was 19. Score was 33-14 in that one. They're down by 27 here. And the fewest points Philly has scored in the first half this year is 14. Now Mark Lewis looking for another bar ball. Not this time, short one. Stevenson he is dropped at the two yard line. My goodness. They had some struggles on special teams last week. Poppy Livers tackled for a safety on the kickoff. Philly would give up this two point conversion to the top seed Albany on a fake. And then an opportunity to recover a bar ball, but it bounces out. See, first half possessions last week. They've only had two so far this game, but Nilch, they've been bageled so far. From the two, quick hitter Aaron Washa on the outside, knocked into the boards. A first down pickup out near the 15. I think guys are figuring out they better put a body, bring your body with you when you go to tackle Washa. He's pretty physical with the ball in his hands. I don't know that he wants the comparison, but it is. It's it's very similar to Ryan McDaniel. Yeah, I don't know if he's all the way there yet, but he's he's working on getting there. McDaniel wore number 19 many years in his Philly uniform. Wide open along the far wall. Darius Prince wrapped up as he gains eight and Powell the tackle. And that leads us to the one minute warning. In one minute time the rules are now in effect. Each team. Baltimore leads 27 0. 27 0, final minute, first half. Baltimore has now outscored Philly in the first half of their matchups this year, 132 to 83. So that's plus 49. Philly has been held scoreless so far on a bar. Low pass, diving catch. Aaron Washer, then the late hit comes in. I don't know, Sid, you got to touch him down. I, well, you got to touch him down. I, I, I think the call's made because he kind of leads with the shoulder to a guy that's laying on the ground. Well, he didn't leave you with just, the head. You he said, what did you say, though? You've got to do what to him? Touch him down. Touch him down. After the play was over, personal foul defense number one. 
A late hit. Ten yards. First down. But we're not playing two-hand touch. But he's laying on the ground. I don't care if you're playing. Yes, but if play. he can get up and run, which he can. Philadelphia right here, he can get up and run if he chooses to. But First he's, down. I mean, what is he doing there? He didn't lead with the shoulder. He led with his arm. So that's touch. The forearm and the shoulder. That's not touch. Come on, dude. This is tackle football. Uh, have you if ever played player, tackle football? Yes. If a player, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. If a player is allowed to get up and run, which he is. Good, right? but what was he doing? He just laid there. He didn't make any motion to try to get up. He just laid there. Okay, but he has the ability if he wants to to get he up and run. He laid there. Touch him down. Be a professional. Pass caught. When I get, I Five get, yards. I get the whole wanting to play physical thing, but be a pro. Timeout. Baltimore. Their first charge time of the half. 30 seconds. Baltimore is going to call time. All right, so we need to look at it this way, Sid. This is a two-game series. So Philly is not necessarily playing. Of course, you're playing to win the game. But you're playing to keep you're getting points. To minimize the, and the minimize deficit. minimize the damage that you're right. going to start with next week. You're, you're right. Absolutely right. And, and you know what? Philly is a team that can get as hot as anybody. So by no means should or will Baltimore feel comfortable. You're, you're not the two-time defending champs for, for any reason. you played a ton of tough games. Now they're just trying to figure out a formula to, to just break the seal. They got to put points on the board. Baltimore's got two timeouts left. Philly's got their full complement of three. Prince blocking in front. And Prince down to the seven, gives himself up. It's a first down, and now the clock going to stop here as Baltimore stops it. Timeout. Baltimore. With 26 Their second seconds. Charge timeout in the half. 30 seconds in length. Baltimore timeout brought to you by Olive Ridge Apartments of North. And it's time for KBI. Prince wasn't trying to score. He's trying to force a timeout. That's why he got down on the ground. If you're Philly, obviously you want to score with about nothing on the clock. Baltimore would like to get this thing back. Dan is five for five, so uh, pretty slow first <laughs> half by his standards, but five for his last five for 40 yards. This defense just gives them problems. They're playing a little more physical with the receivers, taking away some of the quicks. Quick hitter and Prince the catch marker down. It's going to be a hold on, on Darius Reynolds. They are killing themselves in this first half. I just talked about them taking away the quicks and playing more physical right now than the Philadelphia wide receivers. Holding offense. Number seven, 10 yard penalty. Eaten. Football back at the 17 now with 22 seconds. But by formation, you heard Joe Powell talk about knowing what they want to do. By formation, you get this little bunch look, look for the quicks. Anytime there's space, they're going to try to get it out. Right there, the grab from Darius Reynolds on Josh Victorian. Dalzell wants timeout. Timeout. Philadelphia. Their first charge timeout of that. Timer, please reset the clock to 22 seconds. 22. Thank you. So 22. They've got the correct time. But that's what that's what Clint was worried about. The clock is running. He's, he's given 
giving my man Luffley some <laughs> some flack. Now he turns his attention to the guys. Well, what's the conversation going to be like uh, in the locker room with Tulsa? Well, I, I can tell you he's not happy. And what, what, what was the one thing? Well, one of the things Joe what Powell said. What was the one of the things Joe Powell said is we got to play with emotion, yeah. and energy, right? Yeah. So are you feeling that energy I'm from Philadelphia? It. I, that are, you feeling it, are you feeling it from Philadelphia? Yeah. Any energy? No, no, no not, at, not all. at all. And that's the one thing you got to be emotional, excited to play, play with emotion, and it's not happening right now. You got a free play. Free play caught. Prince down to the 11. Movement up front will be offsides. Yeah, the Joe Powell interview with John Meter Perel was the best one I've heard in a long time. Long time. <laughs> we give John credit for asking the right questions. <laughs> Illegal formation on the defense. The nose guard out of a stance. That's a five yard penalty. First down. Since it was a live ball foul, Philadelphia has chosen to start the clock on the snap. Play clock operator <laughs> went ahead and had an insult to injury there. <laughs> so the ball is at the 17, 18 seconds to go, first and goal. Baltimore has one timeout left, Philly has two. Rana Paul pitches, fires, nobody home. His man went over the middle and he threw it to the corner. And that's uh, Money Reynolds. And again, it's just for whatever reason, I don't know if I'm saying well, it right listen, on the different pages listen. or what, but they aren't ma they aren't matching up the way they normally do. And, and you're they're not allowing the guys to just roam free. You understand? Like everybody's attached, someone is attached. And they're yeah. forcing the hand of the receivers. You've got to out physical these DBs, play through them to the ball because they're not going to give you anything easy. Two catches, five times he's been targeted. So second goal, 14 seconds. Radapa end zone. What a oh. got his hands on. on. He got his hands and almost trapped it against the wall. But that's six targets now for Reynolds. It's Just still only two catches. And Joe Powell's letting him hear about it. The Gray's played a good first half. Well, he's challenged. That's a ball that's got to be caught by Darius Reynolds, though. He's got to catch that. He gets he pulls it with one hand and touches it with the other hand. You got to catch that. And it's had some had some good decent numbers against Baltimore. Absolutely. Third and goal, eight seconds. Rana Paul in zone again for Washa. And pass interference gonna be coming on Virgil Gray. He, he missed an opportunity for a freebie. He should have thrown this one to Darius Prince on the quick cross route here. He's got him wide open, but he takes a tougher one down the middle. And right now, Joe Powell is making a effort to stay in the dome. Pass interference defense number four. Penalty shot to this the goal, automatic first down. Philadelphia has chosen to add time back onto the clock. Timer, please set the clock at eight seconds. Eight seconds. So they're going to get three more seconds on the clock here. So eight seconds. It, it could turn out pretty nicely for Philly, all things it considered. Could. It could, and they get the ball coming out. So, but they've got to right now figure out a way to take some steam out of this Baltimore team that's playing aggressive and extremely confident. Money Reynolds in motion. Rodabaugh fires Prince. Gets to the goal line and crosses. A six yard touchdown for Darius Prince. And finally, Philly on the board with two seconds left in the half. Yeah, 
Nice read on the quick out, comes out fast, but right there, what Baltimore has done all afternoon is make tackles once they've made contact, not giving up the extra yards. Prince able to fight his way through to the end zone for the score. And Philly, finally, welcome to the game. Trevino, PAT, eight play scoring drive, 47 yards in 222, and now Trevino makes it 27 to seven. Well, with everything that went wrong, Philly's final drive worked out, not just getting a touchdown, but leaving Baltimore with only two seconds. And again, it's aggregate scoring over the course of two weeks. And we saw game one of the two game home and home between Albany and Washington, Albany winning by one in overtime. So they will be plus one when they begin the second game of the series in Albany next Saturday night here on CBS Sports Network. What a, what a great game that was. Yeah, it was. And, and I, I can tell you this one will be better by the end of it. This team will continue to play. They've been able to find ways to get things done, but now, as we talked about, they're trying to just kind of climb back, climb back in it, climb back in it. To Keep it close. 29 minutes and 58 seconds. Mike Nataro, our uh, statistician, the best in the business. Just let me know that. 29:58 is how long it took for he, Baltimore. He just let you know that he's the best in the business, or that, <laughs> or that that's how long it took oh, him to score. The moment I walked in the building, he let me know he's the best. It's in like the big Mike's in the house. He made it really clear that he does the NFL for Andrew Catalan on CBS. <laughs> he likes to remind me of that every time. He's riding Andrew's coattails. Those are good coattails. He's a good dude. Oh, absolutely. Good he's dude. a great dude. And good remember, dude. of course, he did a few seasons yeah, of this. I did games with league here fun. on CBS Sports Network. I remember specifically watching that year that Cleveland had all those miracle finishes. It seemed like every Saturday night I'd be on the couch watching you and Catalan call those unbelievable games. All right, so two seconds to go. Trevino. Tompkins will take it off the net. Bobbles it. This will be Tompkins going down. So they're going to get to run one play. Touchdown to no all four tries. To advance the ball out of the end zone. Ball be placed at the two yard line. First down. What would you run here with one play? Well, you've got two two guys that can go the distance. You got a great returner in Tompkins. Throw a screen to him. You can run the clear clear with a with a deep out or a cross and block. There's a lot lot of different ways to 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 do this. However, what you don't want to do is put yourself in a situation where you give up some sort of safety or defensive points right now at all. You've got all the momentum going your way. You want to make sure to get out of here clean. 27 to 7 Baltimore. You got a lot of space in here. I'd get the ball in this guy's hands as fast as possible. And movement up front. Prior snap, delay game number 12 offense after this is the goal. First down. So back to the one, it'll be. And now 49 yards to go in one play. And again. Careful here. <laughs> You've got everything going your way. You've seen this movie before. Don't give life to a giant that wants to sleep right now on its own. Collins out there with Sims and Tompkins. Blow it dead again. Timeout. Baltimore. Their third and final timeout of the half. Burns their final timeout. Omar Smith going to chat things over. A recap of Albany and Washington from last night. And you and I were there. What a thriller it was. Overtime walk-off win on a two-point conversion for Albany in game one of their series. 
highlights and stats of the first half of this one as well. So looking forward to halftime here in Philadelphia inside Wells Fargo Center. Steve Spagnolo in the arena with Jaws, the owner of Philadelphia. So a lot of NFL guys come in and enjoy this league as well. Tompkins on the final play, and he's electrifying. Tompkins, even when he doesn't do much, he does something. There's always a chance, and it makes it scary. And that's the end of the half. But that's what I would have done. I'm getting out of here clean. 27 to 7. Baltimore, the two seed, seven and five. They have the tiebreaker over Philly. They decided to come on the road first. Good decision so far by Omar Smith and company, and he's with John. All right, thanks very much, Brent. Coach, you stifled Philadelphia's offense throughout the first half. How'd you get it done? We were keyed in, but uh, we, you know, we made some stops. We played good on offense, but this game is far from over. Uh, they get the ball, third quarter. So it could easily be, uh, you know, a two-possession game, but we got to come out and play the second half like we started the first one. What's your message at halftime? We want to beat the best. We got to come out and play another half the way we did. But if not, anything can go. They're the defending champs two years in a row. We got our, cut, our work cut out for us, though. All right, Coach, good luck. Thanks. Thanks man. Guys. Hipper 11 of 14, 136, three touchdowns. The defense was phenomenal. 27-7 Baltimore game one of this two-game playoff series. Halftime from Philly is next. Jaws, the owner of the Philadelphia Soul, saw enough in the first half to where he made a beeline into the Soul locker room at halftime, and this is what he had to say. Now let's go to the second half of coaching. Play soul football with emotion, with the passion. Sure. They're in our house and they're taking it to us. Yeah, Don't go. let that happen. Yeah, Let's go and play soul football, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't see that every day. The owner going in there. I, do you disagree with anything he said? Nope. I mean, that's what that's one thing you and I will talk about. There was a lack of passion, emotion. And he's got his friend Steve Spagnuolo right there. And he's embarrassed. I mean. With the way his well, team he, is playing right now. Well, he knows his team is capable of much more. However, right now, Baltimore has come in here with a game plan, number one, to intimidate and to just be fearless at every exchange. And they've performed extremely well this fall. Mariko Stevenson off the net. Philly scored last. They get the ball first in the second half. Stevenson hasn't gotten much space on returns tonight. Stats in the first half, what stands out most for you? Ooh, I think the yards per play right here, this is huge. Philly averages about seven yards a play. They're down to four nine. And you got a turnover. I mean, it's 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 been tough for them to get things going offensively. Some miscues, guys not on the right page. I, I think we need a little SK injected in the game. Maybe he can bring some of his leadership. He's only got one catch. He turned it over on downs, threw a pick, and then eight play drives. Touchdown. Yeah, long drives. From the six, Radova. Lost it over the middle. Money Reynolds, the catch. In stride, down inside the Baltimore 15. And a gain of 28. Longest play of the game for the Philadelphia Soul. Good, good man coverage. This is a great touch. And way to attack the ball when it's in the air. Virgil Gray got his hand on that ball. That's good concentration. Way to bring it down. Big shot in the arm early. Down by 20 as the third quarter begins. From the 14 on first down. Rana Paul looking end zone wide open. Sean Kalanamoku with a Philadelphia touchdown on a two play drive to open the third quarter. You remember I talked about those feet, how quick they were. This is a good setup. 
by SK. Miscommunication on defense, but he, he's able to get through so quickly, you're not able to get back in coverage. Jaws gave that speech in the locker room. And he sees his team come out and put together a two-play 43-yard drive. Trevino off the iron. So now we're back even. Each team has missed an extra point. And it's 27-13. Well, let's see what Jaws thought of that. <laughs> I think it was God dang it. Come on. <laughs> that, that's what I live, Brad. Maybe gosh dang it. <laughs> gosh dang it. Listen. Both these kickers, we've saw we've seen them in another contest drop iron balls like crazy. Yeah. One after another. So you, if you're Philly, you just gotta keep keep chopping away and Keep getting points. Hope, hope you get something off the bar. It's a two-game home-and-home series. Higher seed, which was Baltimore here, chose that they would go on the road first. The highest aggregate score after the two games, which the second game of this will be on Friday night in Baltimore. And then if we're tied tonight, it goes to overtime. But what really matters is if we're tied after that second game, it'll go to overtime as well. And the winner to Arena Bowl 31. So, for Philly, obviously you want to win the game, but even if you don't, just somehow get connected here. Right. You know, you, you don't want to go to Baltimore minus 20 next week. No, you don't. Right now, you would be minus 14. In the other playoff series, Albany beat Washington by one last night, so they'll be plus one going into game two. Well, that series flags all over the place as Tompkins gets chopped down just shy of the 10 yard line. This is a big series defensively. Will be helped out with a, another penalty here. This is where, if you're Baltimore, you just gotta. Keep executing the little things. During the return, illegal block. Both fouls flags the same foul. Illegal block in the back. Number one in the receiving team. Half to this the goal. First down. John is with Radaba. All right, thanks very much, Brett. Dan, take us through the last touchdown pass. Why was it effective? Uh, they've been playing a lot of man. They got good players out there. They trust them, so they're going to play some man coverage. Gave SK a choice route. SK did SK. You know, did a good job. Got to read it out. Hit him when they're there. What was your response to Ron Jaworski coming in the locker room? How do you think the team will respond? You got to do what the ball says, man. He said, step it up. We're going to step it up. <laughs> yep. And as far as offensively in the second half, what do you have to do to keep it going? We just got to play catch, man. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. Read it out. Play catch. Make plays. Let's go. All right. Thanks, Dan. Brent. Pick it. Pass to Tom that time. Intercepted against the boards. That's oh a touchdown. God. That's a touchdown, Philadelphia. Torres Jones on a pass high from Hippard. Ricocheted off the wall. He pulled it off the wall, and it's a pick six. I think the only question will be as if it hit a fan, but I think it it absolutely comes off the wall. We'll see. But they're trying to get it out quick, and you got two guys expecting the ball, and it gets batted up right there, and that's a touchdown. This one is no good again. Wow. So two missed PATs. Philly's first touchdown came 29 minutes, 58 seconds into the game. They've got two in the last three minutes, and they're back in the game. 27-19, four minutes into the third. Two quick touchdowns for Philly after getting blasted in the first half.
such a game of momentum. Let's we'll see. I mean, next thing you know, another bar ball. And it's Tompkins off the net. Bye bye. Open lane. It's over. Tompkins is gone. That's how you make him be quiet right there. Touchdown, Baltimore. That's a response. 57 yards, Brandon Tompkins. I mean, I'm going to sound crazy, but in, in, in a game like this, you're almost better off onside kicking. That guy is so dangerous with the ball in his hands. <laughs> And look at everybody get attached. Look at that lane is huge. But by the time Trevino gets there, there's too much space between he and Brandon, and he's able to just make a quick move and get out. 19 career kick return touchdowns. That one, 57 yards, played perfectly off the net. Sixth in the AFL history now in kick return TDs. You asked earlier if I played the game. We were in a little argument first. Uh, I didn't. And sometimes I think I'm better off that way because I don't know if I can handle the, the, the range of emotions. I mean, you just saw Jaws. One second we're showing Jaws, he's ecstatic. The next one, he's beside himself. But he just hits it with speed. And that's a really good job of blocking up front because that lane was nice. Spagnolo sharing in the frustration of his good friend. <laughs> hey, listen, nobody's done more for this league and is more important in this league than Ron Jaworski. So nobody cares about it. He cares. Boy, That's the thing. He cares about the game. And listen, if, if Philly goes out and plays top notch, Baltimore goes out and plays top notch, and Philly loses. He knows it's good for the game, yep. but he doesn't want to see his team get boat raced at home in front of their fans. Nobody does. Evident when he went into the Philly locker room and delivered a heated speech. Stevenson on the return, nothing. And balls now out. Loose. Oh my God. Philly falls That's on it. it. Wow. Hollis was able to dive on top of the Stevenson fumble. One play at a time. One play at a time. We never play. So Philly comes out of the gates and gets a two play touchdown drive, followed by this pick six off the wall. This is a really good job by Jones to keep playing. He sees it, gets his hand underneath it. That's everybody reacting. John Meter Perel on the bench. There's Jaws. The range of emotions. It's a crazy game, and you've got to be mentally tough to, to withstand it all. Three touchdowns in the last two and a half minutes. It's amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. Their first touchdown took almost the entire first half. Then they got two touchdowns in 320. Rodabaugh rifles it, nearly intercepted by Virgil Gray. Tompkins is with John down below. All right, thanks, Brett. Brandon, congratulations on the score. Take us through it. What did you see in front of you? Uh, my teammates told me right before we broke the huddle, they said, we're going to the house. Uh, just followed us, and we're going to take you there, and that's what they did. Special teams has been so big all year for you guys with Mark Lewis and company. Uh, a huge part of your game. What's the mantra from Omar Smith and the coaching staff? Uh, that's always special teams, the first player offense, the first player defense. So we, we pride on that and take care of business when it's, when it's called. All right, Brandon, thank you. All right, shout out to my mom, daddy, baby Chan, uh, Renee, Ash, and all y'all. All right. Hello to you and Brett and said too. <laughs> thank you, John. There's a lot of personality on that pitch. This one fired over the middle, under throw. Might have been tipped at the line. Uh, he didn't set his feet. He got a little off balance. He tried to pump one way and come back to the middle. And Virgil Gray is down. He was slow to get up on that out. last play. He's pointing at his calf in his calf area.
Virgil Gray slow to get up. He'll be helped off. Injury timeout here in Philly. 34-19, 8-38 in this third quarter. Philadelphia comes out on third and ten from the five. Radapov caught Prince, tackled immediately at the 15. Let's go down to John, who's got an injury update on Gray, who was helped off moments ago. Yeah, Brent, looks like he's going to be okay. They are massaging his right calf. He is expected to return. He's dealing with cramps right now. And I know said, you know how difficult can that, that can be, but they do expect him to come back eventually. He's getting massaged as we speak. Thank you, John. I didn't run fast enough to cramp. <laughs> the only reason I cramped because I had to wear a knee brace. That was too tight. <laughs> That's good news, but you know, you take one future Hall of Famer out of the game and you put a bona fide Hall of Famer bad. in the game, Cleveland Thomas, Cleveland. number eight. Called him out of retirement a few weeks ago. Rodapaw batted down, still in the air, but falls safely for Philly. Burrell again. That's his second Burrell. one. Guy brings it. Last time he played Philly in the playoffs was 16, 2016, when he was with the Arizona Rattlers and he blew his knee out. So you see him play off the block and get his hands up. Not going to get home. Still able to make a difference in the play. from the 16. Prince the motion man. Radapoff fires, caught underneath Washa. Down the near boards, finally. Ripped into the wall at the five yard line. Washa on a gain of 29. It's a good read. You're getting a lot of zone. They're trying to protect. You see the sky coverage. The void is over here. They run a deep post with a deep cross. Nice soft touch throw from Dan to make sure it's over the top of Joe Powell, who's already victimized him once with an INT. That's right. Really good throw and catch. Six to play in the third. Philly driving down 34-19. Brought a ball back of the end zone, tripped up, no call. Washa got his feet tangled with the defender. It's a good no call. He didn't get up and complain a bit. Stumbled, feet got tangled up. Five, second down goal. And for Cleveland to catch Reynolds here in motion. Brought up off. Incomplete looking for Reynolds. Coverage. And they're running combo routes down there. Josh Burks. Victorian got in there. Excuse me, combo coverage. If somebody leaves your area, you pass them on. What you're going to need is two break, out breaking routes when you see this coverage. Or two in breaks. Watch Cleveland pass him on and wait for the second one. Or you need something to that back corner, one to the front pylon. Eighth play of this drive. They have had now three eight play drives in this game. And one came up empty. Third down and goal. Football resting at the five. Play clock down to five. Brought a ball looking for Reynolds in the corner. It's broken up. This Baltimore defense has come to play. Cleveland Thomas, the Hall of Famer. And again, you got to give him some off the line. He's being jammed and checked. But they're just out competing. That ball uncatchable where it was thrown. 
And they're just competing a little bit harder in the secondary. I mean, it's obvious you're watching it. And it's not even close. 0 for 2 on fourth down today. Something you don't see a lot from this offense. They've been really good in special situations. Virgil Gray injured at the start of this drive. He's still on the bench. Thomas out there. Clock under five. Fourth and goal. Play clock violation. Play clock. Are you okay on some level, giving yourself more Brian space here? Delay yeah. game offense number five. Five-yard penalty. It remains fourth down. And you can actually take the Jack linebacker out of this. He's not available to leave the box now that it's on the 10. You can only go five. Maybe they'll give him six deep. And you talk about some of the fields in the Arena League have the rounded edges. The hockey, mimicking the hockey. This is an arena where you got the full space in those corners. Fourth and goal from the 10. Brought up under heat. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Aaron Washa. And Baltimore with yet another defensive stop. Their third of the game as the soul come up empty deep in the third. Weekdays, noon Eastern, Jim Rohn welcomes you to the jungle for three hours of hot takes, high impact interviews, and a steady dose of the clones. It's the Jim Rohn Show on CBS Sports Network. Well, the reaction we saw going to break from Clint Olsell was uh, sheer anger after Philadelphia snapped. We'll show you, they snapped it at the wrong time on that fourth down play, and now Baltimore gets their third defensive stop. And Hipper to the offense back out there, and they're gonna blow this one dead. Brian Snap, false start offense, number 12, quarterback head bob. Penalties after this to the goal, it is still first down. So that's on Hippert as he gets an explanation from Dave Kataya. It's one of those tough calls to take as a QB. You're like, my head, Bob. Obviously, my head's going to move because I'm screaming. Right. I mean, if I'm out there doing some Michael Jackson, then that's one thing. But and just... Hipp Hippert's got every right to go over and get an explanation there, right? He's not showing absolutely, him no, up. No, no, absolutely not. He's he's a pro. He, he didn't um, operate like that. Two to play, third quarter. Baltimore with the ball up 34-19. On first and 15, it's caught. Sims has been quiet since that, since that opening drive. Gains 11 here out to the 16. All right, here's the play we're talking about on fourth and goal. If it looks a little awkward, watch the snap is on two. He snaps it on one. Look at everybody still in their stance. That's a busted play, and that's how you get your quarterback hurt. Woo. Tough. Second down and four. 119 in the third. Tompkins takes the handoff. Left side, nothing there. There's Willie McGinnis. Count fans as well. Third down three from the 17. Baltimore trying to pour it on in this first of a home and home playoff series with aggregate scoring. Baltimore doesn't just want to win this game, they want to pour it on and go home next week up by a large margin. Incomplete here, miscommunication brings up fourth and three. They want holding, and initially it was, but if you're BT, 
you got to run through it and force them to call it. You got to show that you're trying to break away and come back. You can't just expect them to call it if you don't finish the play. You got to finish. End of three. Yeah, end of the third period. Timeout. Baltimore faces a fourth down when we come back up 34 19 against Jaws in Philly in their home building. Quarter begins 34 19 Baltimore. The brigade led 27 7 at the break. Philly got back to back touchdowns to open the second half. And then a kick return touchdown of 50 70 yards for Baltimore put them back in command. Readable 30 last year. Philadelphia and Tampa. Darius Prince started Philadelphia scoring a two yard touchdown second quarter. That was Prince's breakout game. Then in the fourth, his second touchdown put him up a next possession. They sacked Randy Hippard to go up 10. Then Sean Kalanamoku, a 16 yard touchdown with five minutes left to seal the deal. The soul held on down the stretch and won a readable 30 44 40. That was Prince's first start. Daniel had injured his hand the week before that. And then he ends up. Arena Bowl MVP. They've had the last two Arena Bowl MVPs. Wide receivers are on this roster right now for Philadelphia. Fourth and three. Big play for the brigade right oh, here. God. Wide open. Down the far side. Caught. And falling backwards into the end zone is Tompkins. A 33-yard touchdown on fourth down. And late markers in with the celebration of Tompkins. Joe Goosby take an exception. I probably would as well. And if you're going to come up and try and jam Brandon Tompkins at the line of scrimmage, you have got to get hands on. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 18 defense. That penalty will be enforced on the first play after the kickdown. Kickoff, the result of the play is a touchdown. Well, you watch right there in the middle. And he misses and it's over with. And then Joe Gooseby takes exception and then walks through the dance. Right, I mean, Joe's a pro. I would probably done the same thing. Me too. But, but it, fact but is, is fact allowed, is, absolutely he's allowed, he's allowed to. Celebration. And you don't want him celebrating, stop him. Period. Right? Stop him. Four play, 40 yard touchdown drive and a shade under three minutes. Lewis down the middle. It's 41 20, and now another late penalty. And that's Jake Metz. After the play was over, personal foul offense, number 23. That penalty will offset the prior foul on Philadelphia on the first play after the kickoff. So that's on Rory Nixon. Let's see what he did. Had something to do with Mets. Well, here. I think Mets is rushing. He's bull rushing. He won't stop rushing him, so he just kind of slings him. I mean, I don't know. I mean, well, you played you, you played at least at a real football, right? Did you ever throw anybody down like that? <laughs> now, do I agree with that call? No, I don't. He's still bull rushing. Exactly. You know, I mean, what are you gonna do? Exactly. He's still he's still well bull after rushing. the play. I'm with you. So I'm, I'm I mean I'm getting out of the way, and I think that's yeah. a, one of those reactionary things where you kind of look at somewhere else and you just look and see a guy go flying. That's what that call was. I'm with you, Sid. I'm with you till the end. Wow. Friends till the end. Ride or die. 41 19, minute deep in the fourth. Wow. I don't know. There's been some mistakes that at this point in the season shouldn't be happening in my mind. Plays. I, 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 listen, you can't do anything about You're going to have turnovers. It's arena football. You throw the ball. 90% of the time in this game you throw it. There's going to be some turnovers. You can't account for the ball bar balls that happens. 
I'm it's... talking about some of the penalties and extracurricular. Stevenson got a lane down that far side. And a nice return out to the 17. Third quarter recap here. Again, it was 27-7. And Ronald Paul unleashes a two-play. Yes, play. the light conduct touchdown penalty against drive. Philadelphia and the unnecessary roughness penalty against Baltimore. And then after the touchdown, at the dead ball spot. Torres Jones on a pick six off the wall. But then, when a, Philly had all the momentum, it's time. That's a killer. You can't allow a kick return. That's a killer. And listen, it's not easy stopping that dude. No. That dude is fantastic with the ball in his hands. But you can't have it. I don't even care if you have to squib kick. You can't give up points that way. Make him run plays and earn some offense. That's a late throw. That's nearly oh, accepted it once. That's a late throw. He is late on that throw. Josh Victorian coming back the other way. It's a pick down to the 17. Did somebody on the Baltimore bench touch it and kind of help keep that ball alive is what I would like to know. The call in the field is intercepted. He jumps Seconds this route. Victorian. He jumps this route. It's a bench route from SK. Ball's late. It needed to be out before he broke. Right there, it's just sitting, sitting. Nobody's touching it. Nope. That's all him. Right call. It's absolutely the right call. Boy, that's just that concentration, he, the ability with the hands set. He just good. jumped around, literally. John, it happened right in front of you, huh? Yeah, it did, Brett. You know, I had to, uh, let's see, I had to do everything I could to not grab that ball. <laughs> I had to channel my inner set monitor and say, don't grab it, because it was right in front of me. But what a play by Victorian. You can see the adjustment he made on it, guys. His athleticism really came to the forefront. And you hung in there pretty well. You saw the replay, Hippert going all. And uh, going for it all overthrows his man, DJ Stevens. You hung in there, John. You saw the replay. You had kind of an interesting look on your face, but it wasn't, it looked like you were scared. <laughs> no, I wasn't scared. It didn't it was look just like you were scared. Surprise, the ball's coming. Look out. I have a mic, so I can use that as a weapon, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You can, just don't give it up. <laughs> don't give up the mic. Yeah, don't drop it. <laughs> it's much safer up on the booth. Absolutely. And you'll be here, uh, what, in uh, Albany next Saturday night for game two of that playoff series. Can't huh? wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. It was fun last night, no doubt, with Washington giving Albany everything they could handle and falling short by one in D.C. Had every chance to win that game. Washington did. Six-yard pickup for Stevens. Got to feel good. I know they're going into a hostile environment. In the capital region up in Albany. And uh, you, you'll be in the booth with John. I hope you treat John better than you do me. You're treated like royalty up here <laughs> all the time. People bringing you coffee I have, they... every five minutes. Yeah. Surprised you haven't asked for some hot cocoa or something up here. Third and four. It's not a bad idea. Play clock at four. From the 11, Randy Hippert pumps once. Beckwell in the middle, floats it for the end zone. Juggling grab, touchdown, Brandon Collins. Wow. Wow. You've got two guys. This is going to end up here. Brandon Collins is going to end up on the other side. You got two guys going to the same area. It's just a climb route and not sure which one he's throwing it to, but they're both open and they decide to share and then they're going to have a dance party. Here we go, fellas. One, two, three, go. That's well coordinated. Well coordinated. Absolutely. So here's Lewis. Three play 17 yard drive at 139. We knew Baltimore was good, said. I don't know if we could have predicted 48-19 in the fourth quarter in Philadelphia. After dropping three straight to fall out of the number one. After Philly cut it to eight early in the second half, Baltimore has reeled off 21 straight. Coming up next, saddle up and watch the PRCA's finest Cowboys compete in Arizona as the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour, presented by Justin Boots, gets underway right here on CBS Sports Network. 
kick it deep and through into the fourth row. It'll come out at the five yard line. And again, you know, we've said this several times. Every point's going to matter. You got to continue playing. You look before tonight, Baltimore at home plus 60 away, minus 17. And you see Philly better on the road than they are at home, plus three. But man, throwing it away tonight. Ten to play in the game, 48-19 Baltimore. This, whatever the final score is, you know, I don't think we can hammer this point home too much. Whatever the final score is, that will be the score the next lead, week. The lead. The lead, whatever it is. Uh, right now, it's plus 29. So if this was the end of the game right now, we would go to Baltimore with Baltimore starting, essentially, however you want to look at it, up 29 to nothing. And that is an uphill climb. Yes. So Philly's got to find a way to cut into this thing over the final nine minutes. Probably not going to win this football game, right? Never say never, but probably not going to win it. But get it down to something manageable for next week. You can handle being down two touchdowns to start next week's game. You can handle being down 17 points. Anything more than three possessions, uh, it's going to be tough to come back from. It's Friday night in Baltimore, and that's the other thing, Seth. Quick turnaround from this Sunday night game to a Friday night game. Largest comeback by Philly in the playoffs is 14 points back in 2013. Ronald Ball caught Prince. Down to the 21 of Baltimore. Marker down all the way back at the five. Gain of 16. We'll see if it stands. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number nine defense. Ten yard penalty, first down. That's that's uh, Damian Perrell. Tries to hold him up, but he still gives him the shot to the ribs. Two steps later. Was that was that on time? The ball had been gone. Did you even see the ball throw? Did you even see the ball throw? I see you turn your head in disgust, like that's not a penalty. The ball was thrown. Oh, he's stuck to the quarterbacks. Corner, got a man, touchdown. Perfectly thrown ball, run up off for Prince. He scores, but he's slow to get up. He got dinged on the play, but he hung in and gets a 10-yard touchdown catch. It's a good throw and catch, and I just think he goes into that corner a little awkwardly. It's a good throw. He drops it in there. Said I'm with you now on these arenas. I used to go the other way that I liked the rounded off arenas because it was the hockey rink essentially is but I'm with you, that extra little space in that corner makes a huge difference. It's, it's like almost at the apex, almost five yards that they cut off. It's great for defense. Trevino. Missed it. And he is in his head. Him and he and We've Shane seen. Austin need to get it figured out. We've seen. It's already minus three for him. Three for Trevino. 48-25, mid-fourth. Trevino has missed three tonight. A lot has gone wrong for Dalzell and company. Didn't get a touchdown, though, so six more, and we talk about this aggregate scoring over the course of these two-game home-and-home playoff series. Every point counts. You need those PATs back. But at least you're able to get six more. Now the onside kick, Trevino. And scooped up beautifully on the catch by Sims at the 10 yard line. Well prepared, they were ready for it. Would you just keep doing that at this point? Yes. In this game, just keep onside kicking. That's the only way you, you don't allow them to run a ton of clock, and you, they may keep scoring, but you never know. Well, that's, that said, that, that'd be my concern. 
to keep stretching scoring, it away from you. Yeah, yeah, keep stretching the lead. This you got to think of this as an eight-quarter game, obviously, with the aggregate score. Two-game playoff series for those of you just joining us. These two teams match up for game two in Baltimore. It's a home and home next Friday night. Whatever the score is tonight, that'll be the difference that the two teams start with to start next week's game. So we're trying to run some clock. Gain of one for Nixon. Right here in the huddle, everything hinges on you having ball security right now. No life, don't put anything on the turf. If you're Philly, so you just you got to be thinking if somehow, somehow, go plus seven the rest of the way. Or plus eight. Go for two. I'm going to get the ball back and score first. Hippert all day underneath, caught, touchdown. Touchdown, Sims. And it's 54 25, a nine yard strike. Hippert to Sims. It's just an underneath drag route. He comes all the way from the other side. No help and a clear throw. You can throw it on a line right through the box. 54 to 25. It was 27 7 to break. Philly got it to 27 to 19. And then they gave up a kick return for a touchdown. That scored. It was the Tompkins kick return. Man out scored 28 6 since that little mini run to start the second half. Hippert all day. Sims gets open. Baltimore blowing the doors off Philadelphia. Philly has two more points than Baltimore, two more yards, I should say, than Baltimore, but they're down 30 in points. Friday night, 7 Eastern. Game two of this series, Philadelphia and Baltimore, right here on CBS Sports Network. The winner of this series into Arena Bowl 31, either the 28th or 29th of July. Stevenson off the net. Oh, tight rope that sideline finally into the wall, just shy of the 15. Here's the bracket. We were in uh, D.C. last night and saw Albany with an overtime victory by one. So game two of their series next Saturday night here on CBS Sports Network with Albany going into that game, aggregate scoring, so it'll be plus one. And this one, if it ended now, it would be Baltimore plus 30 as they begin game two in their own arena. Wow. Friday night. Wow. I mean, that's not undoable, but highly, highly and improbable. If and if you're Baltimore, let's say you are up 30. Here's your auto ball. Right for Kalinamoku, wide open over the middle. Kalinamoku chopped down the Baltimore 17. All right, we'll get back to it in a minute. Uh, John is with Randy Hibbert. John. All right, Brent, thank you. Randy, you guys are putting on a clinic again. You've done it all year against this soul defense. What are you seeing out there? Uh, it, we're just executing the little things. You know, we're taking care of the small stuff and letting the big things take care of themselves. Confidence has got to be building by the possession. How good are you feeling about this club right now? We're, we're doing great right now. We're taking care of the little things. We had a little sputter there right there coming out of half. It was a long time before we touched the ball. But the defense made a great play, got us another stop, and we're taking advantage of those right now. All right, Randy, thank you. Guys? All right, John, over the middle, pass too high for Money Reynolds, and they have not been on the same page there. He said, I wanted to ask you about Baltimore. Let's say you're plus 30 going into next week's game. I know, I know you're going to tell me they just keep playing, just keep running your offense. It has to be, as a player, it has to be in the back of your mind that you have 30 points to play with, does it not? It enters your mind at some point. Well, it not? you obviously know it's there. It's, it's. I mean, you can't not know it's there. However, if you want to be a champ, you've got to find a way to set that aside and just operate. Literally, I mean, operate. You've got to find a way to do it. Incomplete. The center of Baltimore up and over the wall. That's uh, Joe Powell. See, so we talked about 
Philly having three eight play drives, eight play plus drives, coming away with points on two and none on another. But what does that tell tell you that Baltimore is making them do? They're making them run plays, run their offense. They're forcing them to be patient offensively. And that's ultimately why they have more yardage in this game, Philly. They've run 40 plays at that point to the 28 for Baltimore. Big hit over the middle. Willie Bailey coming in to lay the wood on Prince Thomas. They shouldn't say Cleveland Thomas, the Hall of Famer. Sitting in that zone. It's basically a cover three sitting around that, sitting in the zone. Everyone's backing up and he's just sitting at home playing like a little Raven spot. He's able to come up and put the hammer. Said, is there any thought Philadelphia tried to run clock and just score one touchdown and get out of here at minus 23? No, I, that, that's an option. But I, I think they have a ton of competitive guys. There's a touchdown, Prince. We got our answer now. You hope you can get a stop and get it back and get one more. A recovered onside kick with only 120. Because if you're Baltimore at this point, you want to just run this thing out, don't you? Absolutely. And then maybe if they have the gun, get one more touchdown. But listen, if if, if, if Philly's going to put you in a situation where you can score, they're going to do it. Baltimore's going to score. We've already yep. we know that. They're going to put the hammer down and try to keep scoring. Would you go for two here if you're Philly? They are. It's the ball's on the outside hash. They're definitely one minute going timing for two. rules are now in effect. Each team has three timeouts remaining. This is a timeout. I know I'm peppering you with questions. I, I would go for two. Absolutely. Like this. I would go for two. I'm trying to put extra put points on the board, as many as I could, and that and the fact that my kickers missed three in a row. Plus Trevino's missed three AP. Right. Three PAT. So you wonder what's going on in his head. So we're at the one minute warning. Said Walker, well, he was confident when he talked to you this week. He, he was extremely confident. Extremely. Almost where I was like, huh? But it put a good week of work in. And it's intercepted. Baltimore. He's going to add points here. Are you kidding me? Josh Victorian picks it and takes it the distance. Two more points for Baltimore. Watch him jump this route. We talked about them closing the gap on the quicks and the, the quick play calls, and he just jumps it. Watch him jump inside. See ya. Film study takes care of business. That's Sed Walker. He's the defensive coordinator for Baltimore, and you guys won a championship together, Sed Bonner. The job that he has done having these guys prepared and the film study is here comes the onside kick from Trevino. Still loose in Philadelphia. Is going to recover, so they got a chance. Want to talk about a fans. chance to add more points, obviously. But the, the job said Walker could not have had these guys more prepared in terms of knowing every single play that's coming at them. Well, I think by formation, by place on the field, they've, they've really attacked Philly the way no one has. Made it tough, and, and, and truth be told, he, he literally told me before the game, it's not going to be close. Which is shocking. And I looked at, I mean, I looked at him like, man, you're out of your mind. And lo and behold, Rodapal caught, give himself up. Well, you and I were at a meal at his table a couple of weeks ago, uh, five of us, right? And when I said it was time for me to go to bed and go up to my hotel room, he gave me that, right? He said, no, sit down. <laughs> and so I know firsthand that when he says something, he gains your attention. Yeah, he, you know, he he's a demand played, for, played for Doug K was our D coordinator, and he's got a lot of those kind of attributes. But he understands, and I tell you, when I was a coordinator in the league, he gave me fits. Gave me fits. Mm. Made it tough to call plays. Here comes Rodapaw. 
caught. Prince, open space. Prince, still on his feet. Touchdown, Prince. And Philly with a little bit of life. Every point counts. Going into next, next week's game two of this series, which is decided on aggregate scoring. Now you just got to finish the game. That's just a terrific effort. Prince, 10 catches for a buck 13 and four touchdowns. And the deficit is now 20. He showed up tonight. Boy, if you could get this. Now, though, we saw what happened in the last two point try. It was an interception going the other way for two for Baltimore. Ronabar flips it out, caught. Washa, two points, and the deficit is 18 with 48 seconds left in this game. That's a great play call. Ronabar with the option, little zone read. Fakes the handoff, gets to the edge. Watch him stick it in the belly, and then he gets outside, runs a little option. And Victorian, what do I? What do you do? Do you let the quarterback jog it in, or do you attack him? It's a run pass option for Rodabaugh. Great execution, and and kind of surprising because you don't expect to see Dan Rodabaugh no. running the option out on the edge. Two plays, 38 yards, 12 seconds. Now, if Philly can get a stop, all of a sudden, or another onside, or a bar ball, they or just, they just recovered it. They just recovered it onside, punched it in for what amounted to eight points. All right, John. Brett said Walker, the guy you were just talking about, thought that Philadelphia was off sides, and he did not like that non-call one bit. So they were calling for that desperately. The Philly special kept rearing its ugly head again. Nick Foles like run pass option. But one thing about this Baltimore bench guys, they have been absolutely jacked up from the moment this thing kicked off. Extremely enthused. They've been a quiet confidence since really the whole thing kicked off. You have to really be impressed with the job that Omar Smith has done to get this team ready. No doubt. Here comes the onside kick again. It's still loose. Philadelphia back-to-back -back wow. recoveries on onside kicks. And Trevino, who has missed three APATs, has delivered back-to-back -back beauties. Yeah, probably, probably take a look at it. But no one really wants to step up and grab it, but if you see the slow roll, never hits anybody. Wow. Imagine the night Trevino has had a recovery. The onside kick is being challenged by Baltimore. The challenge is that Philadelphia touched it prior to traveling 10 yards. Plays under further review. Good challenge, right? Uh, yeah, you got to take a shot. Try to stop some of this, some of this spiral that's happening right now. But for that man to miss the three PATs and then come back with this late in the game, back to back. Here comes the call to the booth. Dave Kataya is going to go on the headset with the guys in our truck, led by our producer, Josh Littlejohn. Okay, you with me? Okay, we're looking for the kickers touching the ball before it travels 10 yards. They are not eligible to touch till the ball's travel 10 yards or, or the receivers touch it. So let me see what you got for that. Okay. Okay, go back on that. Go back on that one and go slow, please. We're looking for any type of touch by the kicking team prior to going 10 yards. Okay. All right, go back on that one, go frame by frame, then give me the next look after you go frame by frame on this one. We're looking for that player right there at the hash mark to see if he touches it.
Okay, at this point, hold on, let's let it roll, let it roll. We lose sight of the ball, so what's the other shot that you have that can give me another look on this? All right, here we go. Again, we're looking for Willie to touch it, if they did. All right, go back on that one, go frame by frame. So far, I don't see anything to reverse this call. Let's take a look at this shot. Now, here the ball comes up. You can see it come up. Now, you lose the ball, and it looks like it goes between the two players, but it's... The vision is blocked, and right there, you can't see the ball. Right now, the ball's at 10 yards. We're going to stand on this. Wow. Well done by Dave Katai to explain everything there. Said. Said. The ruling on the field of the Philadelphia recovery stands. First down, Philadelphia. Baltimore charged with a timeout and a challenge. We apologize for the language there. Hey, said. That this completely could change everything going into next week's game. This we're, was a 30-point margin. We're still in this game. I'm just we've, saying, and, and aggregate we've seen, scoring. We've said. seen Philly get hot. We're still in this game. <laughs> oh my. We've seen Philly get hot. We are still in this game. You're we're right. still in this game. They were down 30. Now they get the ball, 47 seconds. That's an eternity in the arena league. Caught, no. Bru they just cannot connect tonight, Money Reynolds and uh, Dan Rodabaugh. He's got he's to not be worried about chirping. He's got to be worried about handling business. Money has been targeted 11 times tonight. Money Reynolds has, but just three catches. Listen, give, give Aaron Washa a go. Give him a shot and some motion to take it downtown. He has a, a knack for making big plays. Said, if they come down and score this and get two, guess who a lot of pressure is on all of a sudden? It's, okay, it's all of a sudden a 10 point deficit. Oh, another drop. Washa, you said Washa, he you're right, he's the guy, but that's a drop there. Need a completion here. Third and ten coming up. Brought a ball, fires it, caught midfield. Prince holds on. I mean that that guy has just been solid all year long. Even with the injury to Dan, he continued to make plays. Midfield first and 10, 38 seconds. Rod Paul right foot it, caught Money Reynolds. Breaks a tackle, takes another man down, and he's at the two-yard line, a gain of 23. With the inability so far to be able to run the ball, now with the way Dan was able to run it. They're gonna, no, they said they're gonna let this go. I'm, they're thinking big picture here. Yeah. They're Time thinking. Out. Philadelphia. Their first charge time and a half, 30 seconds in late. Take it to the gun, get Put uh, points on get the board. six points, a two point conversion, and go into Baltimore at minus 10 for leg two of this series, as opposed to minus 30, which it was just moments ago. Just moments. I mean, think about that. Two onside kicks. It's aggregate scoring, two game playoff series, first time we've ever done it in this league. And it's created drama in a game that, for all intents and purposes, has been decided for quite a while. Does keep it interesting <laughs> through the entire game. I mean, if you've got a team that's... And now they're gonna feel the pressure next week, right? You just said right. it in their home building. And of course, Philly's got, it's still an 18 right now. 
So right now it'd be Philly starting that game down, down by 18. 12 seconds. Hand off Richardson, left side, touchdown. And over the wall for good measure. But he gets the touchdown. And right now, Philly's deficit is down to 12 after being 30 moments ago. Wow. They trailed 55-25. And I think they're going to try and tack on the extra point. Now, if you're Baltimore, do you come out here and go for a touch? Do you, do you try to run a play here to score put points on the board? I think You'll so. You'll get it back with seven seconds left. If he goes two, he can get it down to ten. Timeout. Philadelphia, their second charge Would time you? out of the half, 30 seconds in length. Would you onside kick if you're Philly? Again. No. Not, you don't want to no. give him the short field. No, I don't want to give him the short field. We haven't stopped him once down there. But if right? you got three in a row, then all of a sudden you're running one play. And yeah, you're right. You don't want to take too many chances on this. Just the fact that you're at 12. I mean, considering where you were moments ago, <laughs> where I mean, it was 55 to 25, as you've been 30 points, and the extra points that were missed, three. You just tell by the body language, he just wasn't striking it the way he missed right, missed left. But that one, that one even, Stuffed it a little bit before he hit it, but then he comes back like a true pro and hits back to back onside kicks. Philly recovered them both. Now the two point conversion with seven seconds. Prince the motion man. Dan Ronapaw fires over the middle. It's incomplete. They fail on the two point try. So it remains 57 45. And Dan this, can just get that inside. That's he's wide open. He's fading away. I mean, watch the release. If he just stands on top and puts it inside, see, he throws it back behind, which gives Michael Knight a chance to get back into the play. He's not even involved. He can just get it out in front. So close, but man, you got to give it up. Said with five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the game. Philly was down 55-25. They've outscored Baltimore 20 to two since. So even with that failure right there, at this point they would go into Baltimore for leg two of this playoff series at minus 12 as opposed to minus 30 or whatever it could have been. I, I wouldn't onside here. That's a that's awesome. It's a great stat for Philly, but I'm not kicking the ball to Brandon Tompkins right now. So what do you do? I'm not. I, Maybe squib it. I'm doing something other than giving him a running start with a bunch of blockers on the field. What about giving Baltimore though a short field and a play to score another touchdown? Can't do it. But do you really want to kick the ball no. to this guy? No. Who actually started after you got momentum, shut it down for you. He returned the kick after you came back and put a couple of unanswered scores on the board. To get the crowd back in it. Trevino has had back-to-back -back successful onside kicks. Trevino kicks it deep. And they're going to give Tompkins a chance off the net. It did hit some bar. That's going to slow him up. Tompkins in trouble, and down he goes. So that worked out perfectly for Trevino and Philly. If I'm Goosby, I don't know. Philly in the fourth quarter has made a nice run. They really have and continued to play, and a lot of it led by Darius Prince and Trevino's beautiful kicks. Fans gets that one. And Prince again is able to fight his way into the end zone. Team number 22. That penalty is enforced from the five yard line at his 10 yards. First down. Well, that is going to help Baltimore out with seven seconds. There's a number. You see the last score of Jeremy Richardson going over. If you're Baltimore now, said you're only 35 yards from the end zone. What do you do here with seven seconds? Well, your quarterback can, can throw it as far as far as he needs to. Um, 
I got some guys that can can go. Maybe I get half, and maybe I at least put up put up a field goal. You got Mark Mark Lewis, who's had a tremendous season. He's only missed one on the year. Maybe I give him a shot. Trying to add points for this aggregate two-game playoff series. Collins gives himself up at the 22 with four seconds. Only three seconds go off the clock there. That's that's called being aware of the situation. Would you do another short play here? Maybe. If I if I thought I could get me a little closer. But you are in Philadelphia, and there's no telling. You know that clock's gonna have a quick, quick buzzer on it. It's gonna be quick on the clock. You're not at home. Right now, Baltimore would be plus 12 going into their building for game two of this playoff series on Friday night. And with aggregate scoring over the course of two games, they would start that game with a 12-point lead. Try to add here in the final four seconds. Pippert flip it out, perfectly done. Sims gives himself up in Philly, ter uh, Philly territory now. Here comes you Mark go for Lewis. A, you're gonna go for a field goal, huh? It's going to be Lewis. And this one is much more manageable here, Seth. It'll be a 37-yard attempt from Mark Lewis, who's been the best kicker in the game, to pad the lead and go into the second leg of this series at plus 15. Out of the hole to Shane Boyd. Lewis got the distance off the iron. You can get points if you're Philly. You got to re return. Get some blockage. Philly can get points. Don't run back in the end zone. Zeros on the board. Don't want to give up that safety. They didn't, and he's knocked out. Oh, my, oh my God. That was dangerous. Well, I mean, come on, man. Because he had already come out. It would have been minus two there. <laughs> and that's how the game ends. Lewis just about drilled it, but misses wide. And that's how leg one of this two-game playoff series with aggregate scoring ends. Baltimore wins by 12, but with 5.45 left in the game, they led by 30, and Philly certainly will take some momentum. Now down only 12 on the aggregate scoreboard, only down 12 going into game two in Baltimore the Friday night. The field goal, no good, is being challenged by Baltimore. Plays under further review. And now Baltimore's gonna say somehow that was good? Got nothing to lose to challenge it here. They're reviewing the kick here. Was there any part of you that thought that it might have? No, I thought it hit the, the outside of the upright but mark knows i mean he's been doing it so dave kataya will get on the headset with our truck and our producer josh little john and review this final play with zeros on the board all right we just need to challenge we need to look at the uprights and see if the ball ricocheted and went into the slack net or went outside as it was called so, uh, all right, thank you. Let's take a look at that. It's got to be completely inside the upright. The ball must be completely inside the upright and into past the boundary. Okay, do you have any other shots? That ball goes, that ball, all right. Okay, can you go back on that one? Go slow real quick. It look, remember in arena football, just because it comes off the, the up the uh, supports, the ball remains alive. All right, it hits there, and it looks like it's outside of the crossbar. So this call is going to be confirmed. So there you go. No good. Kataya. The ruling on the field of a field goal being unsuccessful is confirmed. The game is over and the ball points do not count. So we'll head to Baltimore next week. All right, uh, Clint is with uh, John. All right, thanks Brent. Clint, you're down by 30 with 5.45 to go. You come back, it's a 12 point game. How'd you get it done? 
Well, we had to do something. We got to make it manageable for next week. You know, being 12 points down is a lot, is a lot better than 30. So, um, guys made plays. It. My guys don't quit. I mean, we've shown that you, you know all year long. We've had a lot of injuries. And they've come over it, and uh, I'm proud of my guys. You know, at least we got a shot next week. All right, Brent, back to you. Said final thought on Philly now with momentum down by 12 going into Lake Two of this. I think they they'll learn their lesson. It's valuable, and you got to come out ready to play with energy and excited to play they weren't that energized to start this game they've got you know baltimore took it to them early that's going to do it from philadelphia here at wells fargo center for set bonner john meter perel and our entire crew on brent still over the afl playoffs continue on cbs sports network friday night 7 eastern philly and baltimore leg two of this playoff series with aggregate scoring baltimore will start the game up by 12, so it'll be plus 12 on Philly. Saturday at 7 3 Washington Albany, game two of their series with Albany up plus one on Washington. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports on the road, Torino Bowl 31.